Reporting from Arkham Asylum, this is Gotham Rogues. In this video we take a look at forgotten Batman villain, the Signal Man. Throughout his near 80 year old existence, Batman had faced countless enemies. Some of these have gone on to stand among the most infamous fictional villains in pop culture history, while others have completely vanished into obscurity. In this segment of Forgotten Bat Rogues, we spotlight the Signal Man. Well, we've finally gotten to the Signal Man, one of the most requested villains for this series. He's also one of the rogues I specifically had in mind when I came up with Forgotten Batman villains. Other characters and videos have just gotten in the way up until now. Anyway, Signal Man, aka Phil Cobb, made his first appearance in Batman 112, published in 1957. Written by Bill Finger and penciled by Sheldon Moldoff, the story was titled The Signal Man of Crime. In it, we meet Phil Cobb, a small time loser crook who's come to Gotham City in the hopes of becoming a big shot. Since he's a total nobody, however, no hoodlum is interested in joining up with him. Cobb realizes he needs to make a rep for himself, and inspired by the sight of the bat signal, he creates the outlandish persona of the signal man. As a supervillain, Cobb launches a crime wave in Gotham, each time sending riddles to Batman and Robin in the form of various objects and symbols, giving the dynamic duo a chance to stop him for some reason. The Signal Man was of course caught by the end of the story, and he appeared again in Batman 124, published in 1959. This story was fittingly called Return of the Signal Man, and was again done by Finger and Moldoff. It begins with Cobb escaping prison and seeking to form a mob. Now that he's the signal man, Phil thinks he's got enough of a rep to gain followers. But nope, not since his rep is as the guy who was caught by Batman. Although with this logic, none of the Gotham rogues would have goons, considering they've all been defeated by Batman numerous times. Anyway, so Cobb goes at it alone once again, the poor loser, and we basically get a repetition of the first story. Phil made his third appearance in Batman 139, released in 1961. This story was once again by Finger and Moldoff, and the title of it was The Blue Bowman, which will become apparent momentarily. In it, Cobb shares a prison cell with Bullseye. The Daredevil villain? Is this a company crossover? No, this guy is the nemesis of Green Arrow, although we've never heard of him before. Anyway, Bullseye teaches Phil everything about archery, giving him a new skill set to use against the Dark Knight. Realizing that the signal man persona sucked, Cobb becomes the Blue Bowman instead. Whatever. He originally chose this signal man just because he saw the bat signal. He's not very serious about this, is he? Using various trick arrows, Cobb manages to put up more of a fight against the dynamic duo, but in the end he gets his ass handed to him just the same. This was the last time we saw Phil Cobb for a very long time, and the character wouldn't return until Detective Comics 466, published in 1976. The story titled Signal Man Steals the Spotlight was written by Len Wein and penciled by Ernie Chan. In this comic, he's returned once again to the identity of the Signal Man and starts a new crime wave in Gotham. This time around, Cobb proves to be a more formidable foe, having ditched the Riddler knockoff MO and employed an array of sign and signal gimmicks instead. His spree culminates with trapping Batman inside the Bat Signal, which will fry the Dark Knight once Commissioner Gordon turns on the signal. Signal Man himself dies at the end of the story, however, or so it merely seemed, because in the following years the character returned in several cameos. His next big role was in a Justice League three-parter published across Justice League of America 195-197 in 1981. It was written by Jerry Conway and penciled by George Perez. In it, Signal Man is honored by being invited to join the Ultra-Human Knight's new secret society of supervillains, alongside high-profile DC rogues such as Cheetah, Killer Frost, and the Floronic Man. Since this comic, Signal Man hasn't really made any big appearances. He's shown up several times here and there, even as late as in the new Rebirth continuity, but it's always just cameos or small roles. None of them have been substantial. Signal Man has basically become a bottom tier rogue, used as a punching bag and butt of everyone else's joke. The character did appear in the Brave and the Bold cartoon, of course, but only in a non-speaking cameo. These days, the guy is considered to be another Kite Man or Polka Dot Man, which I don't think is really fair. Sure, the original Silver Age stories are really crappy. I mean, why the hell make him a ripoff of the Riddler? What signals and symbols got to do with riddles anyway? And then they went and made him a ripoff of Green Arrow. I do like his stuff from the Bronze Age, however. The 1976 Len Wein story is one of the earliest Batman comics I read, and it's not too bad. Signal Man showed some potential in that story, showcasing a fun personality with a sense of 
ironic humor in a bag full of pretty inventive gimmicks. I do recommend this comic, especially if you like Bronze Age stories. The Justice League 3 parter is a good story too. How could I not love such a big rogue fest? We've got both villains from Earth 1 and Earth 2 in it, like Ragdoll and Psycho Pirate. I suppose these two stories will forever remain the high point of the Signalman's career. With the reputation he has now, for those who actually remember that he exists, I really doubt the character will ever receive his time in the spotlight again. So there you have it. That's the story of forgotten Batman villain, the Signalman. A loser rogue who actually did have some potential. Remember, Arkham Asylum awaits you in the next video.